All right, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna open up with my mega one, and you're, this is gonna be super. Con I mean, in the gardening world, this may be the most controversial thing that you've heard yeah. in a long time, mm -hmm. especially coming from my mouth. Um, and I'm gonna lump this into a group, okay? I'm gonna lump this into a group. So don't hate the player, just hate the game. Oh, here we go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> herbs, herbs in general. Mm. Having a small herb garden, um, very small footprint will literally change your food forever. I'm telling you, it will change everything. And if you've ever grown basil, you know what I'm talking about. But instead of just growing basil, throw in some rosemary, throw in some mint, if you, if you can contain it, that is. Throw in some sage, throw in some bay leaves, thyme, all these different things because not only can you eat them fresh, but you can. You also are going to dry them. I'm just. I'm not even going to suggest. It. I'm going to tell you what you're going to do. You're going to. You're going to dry them. <laughs> and I mean, the thing is, is you can take what I used to do. Is I used to go to the store and I'd buy spices. You can get them for like. I'd go to like a discount store and get them for like twenty five cents. And I'd dump mm -hmm. the spices out and then put my own herbs in them. And once you start cooking with that, it changes every single meal that it touches. It's just the ultimate diversity in your your plate. Um, drying them, everything like that. I mean, you can take, you can, um, you could take a potato, cook mm -hmm. a potato, and use each one of those herbs that I mentioned earlier separately. And each time, it'll feel like you're eating a different meal. That's how important that is to me. So you know, and it, when you break down time, you can get lemon time, you can get regular time, you can get time, and it. You can get time that uh, creeping time that grows as a ground cover, and whenever you step on it, you smell it. So there's that aspect as well. Um, yeah. Lavender is another good one. Lavender not only will it is it pretty, it smells good. It's relaxing. You can make a tea out of it. You can also put it around your garden, and it will keep the deer out of your garden. It'll help deter them because they won't walk through it. Because if the deer walk through it, they'll get the scent on them, and then they're scared that the predators can smell them. And it'll, they'll attack them. So you can do, do that. Um, chamomile, it's a flower. You grow it. You can have teas out of it. Uh, there's all kinds of medicinal properties for that. So like this in general, like you can take <clears throat> a two by two square foot and cram all of these in there. Or you can intersperse them throughout your garden in different places and ways. And they're going to be amazing. And rosemary is a perennial. It comes back year after year. And uh, time is too. Actually, I grew time up north. It got down to seven below zero and that it came back mm. the next year. So yeah. that's, you know, I mean, plant it once and forget it. You know what I mean? So, I, so go ahead. There's a part of me that's frustrated because it's, it wasn't on my list. <laughs> There's a part of me that's like, and it's only because I think it wasn't on my list. I'm like, really? Are you just going to go with all herbs? Right? But then there's a third part of me that says, like, you couldn't just select one. So you got to kind of, like, it would have been a miss if we walked away from this episode without mentioning herbs. So good job. I wish it were me instead of you. Dude, I, I <laughs> use that moment to stand on my soapbox to tell you if you're just now starting a garden, you should start with yeah. an herb garden. Yeah. And wait, let yeah, me so, let me add one more thing in too. If you uh -huh. abuse your herbs, they and when I say abuse, you don't fertilize, you don't water as often, they will be more pungent and more flavorful too. So, I mean, come on. Yeah, there um I have thyme, um sage, parsley. There's one more herb that I put all into a 10-gallon grow bag. Grew it last year. Um, brought it inside. So I'm in zone six. I'm in Chicago, Illinois. So we definitely get zero degrees, you know, Fahrenheit below zero weather. Um, and so I'm pretty sure some of those herbs would have come back if I would have left it, but I wanted to continue to use those herbs kind of over the winter. So I brought it inside. It's in my house now, you know, yeah. and I have plans on taking the whole container back outside. Um, so I've had the experience of rosemary coming back just fine. Lord knows mint. Yeah, like, you can't beat back mint. No. Uh, so I got it just, you know, I think last episode I did say that I'm not a jealous person, but I didn't know that in this episode you would <laughs> like come out of the gate with mint. Right? Well, so. and just so you know, or I should say herbs rather. We're going to be doing a series um, on Tuesdays coming up about medicinal properties at some point. 
and that's going to talk about a lot of these. Um, we're not doctors, just forewarning you, but this is through experience and ed- education and research. But a lot in case of, you thought we were doctors, yeah, let's, let's I mean clearly. <laughs> but I mean the thing is, is there's so many multi-use with a fresh herb and even the dried herb afterwards that you can Mm do mm -hmm. um when we do break that down i think people are going to be surprised on what some of these things do and more than likely you have something growing in your garden now that you didn't even know you could use 